beginning and no end. You're my hope and my defense. You came to see and save the lost. You paid it all upon the cross. You are stronger. You are stronger. Sin is broken. You have saved me. It is written. Christ is risen. Jesus, you are Lord of all. Good morning, Clear Creek. We're, wel- we're glad you're here. We want to welcome our visitors. We hope you'll be with us as often as you can. Uh, we are excited, uh, not just because of New Arrivals Day, but we have some new families that want to be a part of the family here at Clear Creek. I'd like to introduce them to you right now. The first one is Adam and Krista Barnes, their son Owen, who's four. They're over here. We want to welcome you. Welcome home, Barnes family. We're glad that you want to be a part of this congregation. Also, Krista is expecting a a child rather soon, and so we look forward to that. We're getting a jump start on New Arrivals Day next year. Uh, Aaron and Little Star Wilburn with their son Ryder, and he's two, is our Aaron and Little Star. They're back there in the back. (laughs) Welcome home, Wilburns, and she is also expecting another one for New Arrivals Day next year. Someone said to me this morning, you mean we only have nine children? Only nine? We only have nine children for New Arrivals Day. And I thought, well, you know, maybe we should teach a marital bliss class so that we'll have more uh, new arrivals for next year. So uh, you might be looking that on, for that on your calendar sometime soon. A uh, perfect gift for the husband. Uh, having said all that and being thoroughly embarrassed, uh, let, let's bow together in a word of prayer. God, you're awesome. We thank you for joy. We thank you for excitement. And we thank you that we can be here worshiping you together. This is an exciting day for all of us. Uh, We see new life being brought in the world. And that is thrilling. And we know that every one of these children are important to you, just as every person in this room is. And this morning, as we talk about that very briefly, we pray that you'll be honored and that people's hearts will be touched uh, with a message that applies to everyone. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. This morning's lesson is entitled Every. It's going to be a rather brief lesson, so I hope you'll pay close attention. Uh, Every is one of those words that is in Scripture repeatedly. And it's one of those words that is all-inclusive. There are no exceptions. When you see every, it means every. And and I love, and when I look in the book of Matthew chapter 13, as Jesus is giving one of his parables, he begins it this way in the New American Standard Version. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven, that's us guys, is like a dragnet cast in the sea and gathering fish of every kind. How many of you ever heard the phrase, it takes all kinds? Well, that's the way the church is supposed to be. I love looking at these new arrivals up here this morning because you see all kinds of people with all kinds of future and all things in front of them. It takes all kinds, even redheaded guys like Jeremy Womack. It takes all kinds. And so I love the idea that we can all worship God together, every one of us, and that God's family has every kind of person in it. How beautiful is that? When when I was uh, living in Lebanon, we built a fence in our backyard. We built a fence not to keep people out. We built a fence to keep our children in. Every one of our children in. And if you know my children, you probably know why. And you know, the church is the same way. We have this this beautiful gospel, and it's intended to include everyone and keep us all in God's family. But as we talk about being a part of God's family, there's a few things I want to tell you about every that I hope you'll take home with you today. Number one, every person has a story. If you turn over uh, to the book of Matthew chapter 19, just a few chapters over, there's a cool story in there that I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not, but it says, the people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them, but the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. 
Now, I know we've read over that verse time and time and time again, but what we may have never thought about was that day was part of every one of those children's story. Fifty years down the road, those children were probably telling someone, you know, we were walking through the marketplace one day and there was this Jesus. And we, we walked up to him and we, our parents wanted us to go be touched by him and to sit in his lap. And his disciples were pushing us away and then Jesus said, no. And I got to sit in the lap of God. How cool is that story? And for generations and generations, those children and their children told that story. But what we also have to understand is that as part of God's family, we're also intricately part of one another's story. That there'll be people in here that you will influence these children, the ones who are on the stage, the teenagers that we have. And 50 years from now, they're going to be telling a story, and it's going to be about you. And when I started thinking about that, I thought about the people who had influenced my life. When I was a little boy going to church, we had a guy in our church named Dan Reed. Uh, Dan was an elderly gentleman. He was, uh, worked at a bank there in Nashville. And we didn't call him Mr. Dan only. He was Mr. Dan the Candyman. Because every Sunday he came to church and he had pockets full of candy. And we weren't allowed before church to go talk to Mr. Dan because we knew after church, because if we got the candy in us before church, you know what was going to happen. But after church, we all went to see Mr. Dan the Candyman. And Mr. Dan taught us generosity. I, I remember after my father and brother passed away, I was 17 years old. And to be honest, my brother was my very best friend. And I'd lost him forever. And there for months, I was just totally lost. And there was a guy in our congregation that was the duck commander long before Phil Robertson ever came along. We had nothing in common. He lived practically in the woods. And he came up to me at church one day and he said, Joy, you ever been coon hunting? No, sir, I don't, I don't think I ever had. I do like to hunt and I do own a gun. He said, meet me Saturday night, we're going to go coon hunting. So sure enough, Saturday night comes and I meet him at his house and we get in his old beat up pickup truck and we drive out into the middle of the woods. And we get out and we walk around the back of the truck and he pulls out this tape recorder. And he says, now we're going to wait over there in the woods, I'm going to put this tape recorder right here. And it's a recording of coons mating. And this is going to bring the coons up to this truck. <laughs> now, it was years later that I realized that being alone in the woods after dark with a man who had recorded raccoons mating was not a good idea. <laughs> and in answer to your story, no, no coons came. We didn't, get, we didn't even see a raccoon that night. Uh, but I, I just remember this was a guy that had nothing in common with me. But he did something, he had some gift, and he wanted to pour a little bit of himself in me. And that night, Hugh McCall became, became part of my story, a story of kindness and generosity and reaching out and using whatever gift you have to try and encourage others. And there's been plenty of people along the line. A lot of my preaching style is from the preacher I had when I was a kid. And, and, and there were people after I got grown and began in the ministry who encouraged me time and time again with just simple acts. And what I want you to see is that every person here has a story. And that we're all part of one another's story. And as we dedicate these children, recognize the fact that you're about to become part of someone else's story. And those stories need to be told. In the 107th Psalm, the psalmist writes these words. He says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And then in the beginning, the next verse, verse 2, he says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Guys, you have a story. It's your obligation to tell your story. The second thing I want you to see also, though, is that every story matters to God. Whatever your story is, wherever it began and however it began, who you are matters to who God is. As a matter of fact, God is so serious about us having our stories intertwined and being positive influences on one another 
But in Luke chapter 17, these words are recorded straight from the mouth of Jesus. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea and a millstone around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. As you become part of the story of these children who were on the stage here today, their stories matter to God just like yours do. And we need to be a positive influence and a positive model in their story and teach them what we can teach them with our lives. It's our prayer that as these stories develop, we recognize that these stories matter to God and that we are very, very intentional about making sure that these children see Jesus through us. Not only that, but we have to understand that our stories matter to God from us to him. First Peter chapter 5, in verses 6 and 7, Scripture tells us, Humble yourselves, under, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. And then he says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. There is nothing about your life God's not interested in. You know, you have your story. There's nothing about your story God doesn't care about. And when you're going through your darkest moments, God cares about that part of your story. And he wants to lift you up, and you can lay those things, your story, on God, and he can handle it. And the last thing I want you to see is that every story has an ending. We're here celebrating life, new arrivals. But you know, as sobering a thought as this is, it needs to be said that everyone in this room, including these children who were brought forward today, will meet the same destiny. We all face death. We're all going to face the end of this life. And when we face the end of this life, you know what's going to matter? Our story. Our story is, is what's going to be told. Our story is how we're going to be judged. We'll be judged by whether or not our story includes depending on the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. You see, that has to be part of our story. I think about the day of Pentecost, and it's recorded in Acts 2, but Peter's standing and he's preaching before these people, and he's telling them about Jesus. And it all started, as you remember last week, where uh, they, they spoke in tongues, they were accused of being drunk, and Peter decides, you know what, they need to hear about Jesus. So they talk about Jesus, and they get to the end, and they were pierced to the heart, and they want to know, what do we do? In verses 38 and 39, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they look very carefully at this next verse. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom our Lord God will call. Guys, every person has a story. Every story is important to God and every story has an ending and the question this morning when we see and celebrate new life we have to realize that beginning a journey with Jesus is a new life as well how's your story gonna end how are you telling your story how have you become a part of someone else's story in this community of God at Clear Creek and when you tell your story does it include Jesus, his love, his grace, and his saving power? I hope it does. This morning, we invite you to meet your destiny with Jesus, to become part of this revolution of Christianity, and to begin a new chapter in your story. We believe that that chapter begins for Christians by confessing Jesus and being baptized into Christ, we want to invite you to do that. If we can become part of your story by praying with you, or our elders can shepherd you, we'll have elders in rooms A5 and 7 across the hall. We want to serve you because we know every story has an end. and We want to be in heaven with you. And whatever we can do to encourage you and help you along that road, we want to do that. While we stand, while we sing, to encourage you. My heart will sing. No other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing. No other name, Jesus, Jesus. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to.
into your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world.